I hope Muslims will accept me as a Muslim as well as I very much hope Allah will also accept that too. So what I meant by being intolerant is that it's intolerant of change. And that's why I want to go to the Quran because the Quran has never been changed. First, I didn't believe that. When somebody told me that, I was very close to Islam, but when I heard that, I said, like, oh, yeah, sure. Because I've studied the Bible since I was little, man. I know about these different variations of the Bible, the different readings, the different words, the different versions, 66 books in the Protestant Bible, 78 books in the Orthodox Bible, 73 books in the Catholic Bible. Some of the books not even the same as they are from one to the other. Many of the verses change, especially with new translations coming out again and again and again. No actual authentic, complete book out of the 55 or 5,600 manuscripts that exist. No copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy existent on the planet for the last thousand years. And you're going to tell me the Quran doesn't even have a change of one letter? Well, actually, yes, I am going to tell you that. Here's your proof. And I did it. I'm not saying somebody put it in a book and I read it. I'm saying I did this. That's how I know. In your country, in Australia, your neighbor, New Zealand, when I was in Malaysia, when I was in Sri Lanka, when I was in Pakistan, when I was in India, I was in, uh, of course, all the Arab countries, South Africa, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, Belgium, you get the idea? UK, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Canada, United States, Mexico, the Dutch Antilles. <laughs> I've got my passport. I had to get a new passport. I got too full of the. <laughs> Everywhere I went, I would ask children. I still do it. If you were with me yesterday, you would know in our booth, we've got a booth out here. The children come up and I ask them to recite something for me. Every child in every country recites the same exact words. No difference. Every single one of them. We Muslims take it for granted because we just assume everybody knows it. And that's not the case. Every child... We got any children in the audience up here? Somebody want to come up here with me for one minute? Huh? Who wants to come up here? Come on. Come on up here. Watch your step now. Don't break anything, like your legs and stuff. Ahmed. I love this name. All right. This is my friend Ahmed. How old are you, Ahmed? Fine, alhamdulillah. How old are you? Uh, Twelve. Twelve years old? Yes. Okay. Can you recite Surah Fatiha for me? Yes. Okay. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Ad-Din. Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ما شاء الله يا sweetheart now if you didn't know you might say oh well he just made that up but if I ask anybody out here how many of you I want you to mark I want you to be ready to turn your head around and look, because you're in the first row. You can't see everybody. In fact, stand up. Just stand up and I'll watch. How many of you guys have memorized the same surah the same way as this boy? Put your hand up. Now, wait. Keep your hand up if you're not Arab. If you're not an Arab, keep your hand up. Okay, put it down. Thank you, Mark. Whoa. Now you said, well, that's no big deal. I got news for you. We also have more than 20 million people on the planet that memorize the Quran 
from the very first letter, Ba in Bismillah Rahman Rahim, to the letter seen in Minal Jannati Wan Nas, every letter all the way through, more than 20 million people, and 88% of them are not Arab. What's the relevance to the topic? First and foremost, I don't want to learn, lose sight of this. This is not from a human being or a group of human beings, not from a council, not from a meeting that some people had and came up with it. It's not something that's been added to or taken away from over generations. It only came through one person over a period of 23 years, verse by verse, chapter, small chapters, parts of large chapters, and it was always applicable to the particular circumstances that the Muslims found themselves at any given time. Whatever was happening around them, oh, we don't know what to do next, and then here it would come. Now, if you read it today for yourself, you can open it up and still see exactly the same advice coming to you, only applicable to your circumstance. How could anybody think of something like that? Especially when it speaks to your heart. I'll give you an example of one person. And there are so many, but one person who was a Christian, by the way, young man, but he was at a turning point in his life. He didn't know what he was going to do next. He was even thinking suicide. He met some Muslims on the street, and they said, well, come over to our mosque. And he's like, no, no, I don't want to go over there. They gave him the copy of the Quran. And when he opened it up, he got home and he opened it up. He just opened it to the middle, put his finger down. And he said, whatever this says, I'm going to take this serious. The verse I quoted to you is the exact verse that he put his finger on. Al yomul akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum nitmiti wa raditu lakum islam adina. On this day I have perfected for you your way of life. Conferred upon you the biggest na'mah, the biggest favor, the biggest gift, and chose for you to submit in al-Islam. He said, he said, that was the turning point of my life. I knew this is God speaking to me. Because how out of 6,600 and odd verses could I put my finger right on something in the middle of a chapter that said exactly to my heart? And not just one person but everybody in this room has experienced, to some degree or another, what I just talked about. Yes or no? I can't hear you. You can also say Allah Akbar. <laughs> MashaAllah. So, if we understand this, we have so many people who have memorized it exactly the same way. It means if we lost every single book, every volume, every library on this planet. It is the only book that we could bring back. Chapter for chapter, sentence for sentence, word for word, letter for letter, and dot for dart. Alhamdulillah. There's no doubt about it. No human could do it. But Mark, have you ever played this game when you were a kid? I, we used to play it. We called it telephone. Did you ever play it? You take 10 kids or 15 kids, and you tell one of them a secret. Okay, here's the story. Blah, 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 blah. Not much. You know? You're, you're telling them, okay, there's a, a, a rocket ship. It goes to the moon, and it lands, and it picks up some rocks, and it comes back down. And then when it lands, they open it up, and the rocks are radioactive, and everybody falls down dead. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, tell that to the next guy, and the next guy. And each one tells the next guy, the next guy, the next guy. When you get to number 15, well, okay, what's the story? He said, well, everybody got in the car, and they went down and had pizza and got sick. Huh? Not even close. True or false? So how, over 1,400 years... Could this be passed on in oral tradition? Because it's only an oral tradition. It's not written. People at the time wrote what they heard, but the Quran itself is not Quran unless it is heard, 
and spoken. That is what it means, Quran, that which is recited. How could people be reciting, memorizing from a person that didn't even know how to read and write? Generation after generation, country after country, language after language, because many people memorizing it, as I said, 88%, we don't speak Arabic. Yet all of us only memorize it in Arabic. 